What's up guys? Today we are going through the process of batching an entire box of ornaments super quick and how I go about making an efficient way of getting lots done, especially during the holidays. So if you're excited for that, let's dive in and get started right now. First off, huge thanks to Johnson Plastics Plus for sending over the ornaments and also huge thanks to Ben over at Maxi for sending over the Index X so I could test it and share my experience with all of you. We're going to be focusing on how to be efficient batching stuff for the holidays. So we're just going to be mostly showing the process of how I do batch items so that I can spend the cycle time of the laser, prep other stuff, do other things, design other items. Instead of swapping out an item every two minutes, I can swap out every eight or 10 or 15 minutes and still get the most out of that laser. So let's dive in. I have a box of ornaments from Johnson Plastics Plus. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I batch out Christmas ornaments during the holiday rush. So let's get started. We have the Maxi Index X here. We have these beautiful CNC'd fingers and a ruler to get everything lined up to. So we can essentially set these to a consistent interval and use the indexing table to index. This works twofold. In Lightburn, we basically tell how many steps it takes to go a certain distance with this table. And that's the software side of it. That's part of the configuration of the table. You can set a persistent interval here at the table. Doesn't really matter what size the item is that we put in, as long as it fits within that interval, we can use this table to do our indexing. We just tell Lightburn essentially in software what what our interval is going to be. So if it's always 100 millimeters or 150 millimeters, it makes it super easy to set up ongoing jobs. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these so that we can fit our ornaments into the intervals. Normally I would I would have these pre-set up for about 150 millimeters or 100 millimeters, but I went ahead and undid it so we can quickly go through the setup process. Okay, so what I did was I went ahead and set up four intervals. So we got one, two, three, and four. And we just started at the zero on the ruler that we installed, 150, 300, and 450. It's simple as that. Now we can go ahead and unpackage our ornaments. And usually what I do is I use a white glove in order to not have to clean all my fingerprints off of this glass. Just makes things a little bit quicker and easier. Let me just open these up. So the trick with these is we have a cutout for wherever you want to hang your ornaments. So we want to make sure that those are all in the same orientation. So usually I go straight up or straight down. And in this case, I'm going straight up. Before we start, I'll double check that all these are aligned well, and then we'll go over to the software and talk about how to set that up. We're going to go ahead and get this aligned on the laser to the index. So this is assuming that the index is already set up. I'll have a dedicated video on that, or you can go check out Ben's video over at the Maxi YouTube channel, which I'll link below. So we're going to get this lined up, and then we'll go from there. I'm going to go ahead and highlight our engrave here, and what I want to actually do is I want to mirror this horizontally. So we're going to go up here, up at the top, and we're going to use the horizontal mirror option there. What this is going to do is it's going to mirror it so that we're engraving this backwards. What that does is when we look at the glass through the front instead of the back, because we're engraving the back, it's going to look normal. We're going to be able to read it like normal text. If you're engraving the front of something and not the back, you're not trying to look through it to read it, then you don't have to do this. So we got this all set up. Let's double check. Our framing again before we get too far ahead and we're good there so we can close that and what we're gonna do now is we want to get set up for our repeat marking all right so what we do is we go ahead up here to laser tools and we're gonna use repeat marking now I already have a device profile set up for using the index with my UV 
So I already have the settings here set to go for my machine. We tell the software that the steps per millimeter is set based on the rotary or the accessory and the driver that's in the machine. So this is essentially the magic number for my machine here that gives me the correct distance movement. When I'm demanding a millimeter, I get a millimeter. When I demand an inch, I get an inch. So this moves exactly how much I need it to to the next index in order to get it to do what I want it to do. We're using linear. In a previous video where we did something like this, we were using a rotary table that is a rotating option. This is the quick overview of what we're doing here. But again, if you want to learn more about the setup specifically, there, there will be another video for that. So we're going to click OK. And because repeat marking was more or less set up with rotary tables in mind instead of linear tables, when we would use a rotary table, an increment is how much rotation around the center axis do we need in order to get to the next item to be perfectly aligned. This is actually 150 millimeters, even though it says degrees. So I know that's a little bit of a wording mix up, but just know that that's the difference when we're using a linear axis instead of a rotary until that gets updated. I'm going to change this back to millimeters because it's messing with my head. So we're going to go ahead and double check and see where we're at here. We're going to make sure that our position is actually set to zero. And we're going to frame it again just to make sure we're at where we're supposed to be. Ah, let me select our output. All right, so we're going to frame it again. And we're going to ensure that we're in our first position, and we are. And again, we are doing four at a time, so our count is four. Just like rotary marking, we want to put in the quantity that we're marking. The increment is the distance that we're moving, rotating, etc. And uh, those are the important factors other than making sure you're in the right position. If we want to be extra sure that we are uh, moving the correct distance, is we can set our increment here at the movement and we can jog it. And I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and jog. Now, if I frame it again, we should be perfectly framed up. And we are. Now, if I back out of framing and I jog it again, moving the table to the left, I frame it again. You can see that we are again lined up. And back out of framing and jog once more, like I said before, to the 450 mark, and we can frame it. And we are once again framed up perfect. So that's it. So we're going to return to our home position by hitting go to zero. That's going to bring our table back to the starting position uh, because we did set it to zero at the beginning here to make sure we're not just driving that table into an end stop or something. And we're ready to set up. So let's go ahead and run these four. Okay, and we're back. So we got our first four done here. Now, if I go ahead and pick this up, this took about two minutes. And as you can see, it's reversed. So if I flip it over, I know it's a little hard to see, but uh, you get this nice unmarked side. It's nice and clean and shiny and load on another four. And then we're up to eight. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed through that really quick as a time lapse. And then we're gonna discuss how we're gonna do the last two because it's only a partial set of this four.
All right, so that is another set of four done. Now we just need two more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a really super fast adjustment in Lightburn. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna tell Lightburn, instead of doing four, we just want you to do two. And it's really just as simple as that. The super quick change that we're gonna do is we're just going to set our count to two. That's it, that's all we gotta do. So we're gonna go ahead and run back over to the laser. All right, so that is our 10 ornaments done. So we finished up our 10. Realistically, we could have done all 10 on a single bed size. What I wanted to show there was we can modify the number that we're doing to fit the job that we need. So in the case where I need to do 10 of these or 100, we can either divide these up into even quantities to fit that 100. So four at a time would give us 25 batches or we could do 10 at a time to do 10 batches. It really depends on the, the amount of time you want in between batches to get done what you need to get done. Ultimately, these took me two minutes a piece and I was able to knock out other work while I waited for those to run instead of having to sit there and swap them one at a time. And just like that, we finished up an entire box of ornaments with as easy as it was, we could just as easily have done 100 or 150 or 1000 ornaments. Now, just a quick couple of bullet points. We had a cycle time of about eight minutes. So every eight minutes, I had to go over and swap it. Could that have been shorter or longer? Absolutely. So the settings that I chose made the runtime of each ornament about a minute and 57 seconds. So let's round that to two minutes. I chose to do a quantity of four. This is because I wanted to show you guys how easy it was to swap from run to run. Very quick swapping time, very quick setup for each different cycle. I could have run eight of those or six of those doesn't really matter we could do a couple of different ways we can load up as many as we we could um, i could actually run two of those per runtime and we could have shoved like 10 of those into a single cycle and we could have done 100 of those or 120 or 105 now what you saw me do at the end there was I had two left out of the quantity of 10 that I needed to, to create. I intentionally made a remainder situation so that I could show you that you don't have to fiddle with a lot in order to change over your quantity. I didn't have to change any setup other than that one number in the field. So there's some benefits there. So the ability to kind of modify the way you, you do your batching uh, with something like this can really quickly boost your efficiency with doing batch jobs. If you got a lot of something to do and it's a lot of the same thing, this is a really quick way to make your holidays go a lot faster and smoother as an engraver. Another thing to take note of is you don't always need jigs. So because of those little squaring fingers that are attached, if you can fixture it in using that nice little corner it creates, there's really not much of a necessity for a jig. Uh, the benefit to a jig is, is you can actually load it and prep it while the other job is running so that all you have to do is pick up the entire tray and drop in the new one and hit start. Uh, and that means you can actually have zero downtime or nearly zero downtime on the machine, which if your bottleneck is how quick your machine is and not your sausage fingers like mine loading packages, then that could help you out. So I hope that helps. I hope you learned something from this episode. Thanks to Johnson Plastics Plus for sending over these ornaments for me to show you and uh, hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. That's it for this one. Join the communities down below, hit subscribe, hit that like button, hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next time we upload a video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.